Welcome to the Trinity Podcast. My name is Joel, and as you can tell, we're on location today, guys. Yes, we are. We uh, got kicked out of our normal spot. No, we. there's so many things happening here at Trinity. There's actually a TCA drama production all this week happening in our normal location. So we adjusted. I kind of like the change of pace. Yeah, yeah. me too. A little bit different spot here. You can kind of watch what's going on behind us. Maybe we'll have some fans come behind us, like holding signs. Oh, like that would be awesome. Yeah, yes. that'd be really cool. Like waving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we're. I guess Tommy can make the mascot prediction and put yes, the head on the <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. like but it. <laughs> thank you for tuning in and listening today, right here at Trinity. We want to help everyday people discover an extraordinary life with God. I'm joined today on the podcast by Daniel Riddick, Tommy Carr, and Daniel Warren. Pastor Tom is out today. Where is he? He is serving Jesus. Okay, good. In the Bahamas. <laughs> he actually is. He's at a couple of churches there. It's been neat to see a lot of his uh, yeah. social media updates. And he's on the easternmost part of the United States, I think he was Southeastern saying. Southeastern. Southeastern yes. most, yeah. So anyways, he's not with us today, but we have a great panel, and we are going to talk about disagreements, conflict resolution, which, you know, obviously tends to happen a lot nowadays, especially with the invention of social media. Mm. And to get into that discussion, I thought we'd mm. see if we'd get some disagreements going right here on this panel. <laughs> Shouldn't take long. <laughs> Why not? So we're going to play a little game of this or that. Mm -hmm. And me being in student ministry, I've always got a game. This is one we like to do with the students. So... I'll try it with you all, okay? I'm going to give you two choices. You got to pick one or the other, and if you feel free, you want to present why you picked that one, and you want to disagree with someone else, go at it. Okay, let's play this or that. Okay. Here's the first one. iPhone or Android? iPhone. 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 Wow, that was no easy. Disagree. Yeah. <laughs> no it's, disagree. It's qual qualification for employment. Yeah, we don't allow iPhone. green text messages on our staff, so... <laughs> Listen, my friend that was in this group chat decided to switch to Android. Yeah. Everybody roasted him yeah. on his mm -hmm. first text yep. that went green. Yep. They were so upset by it. <laughs> but we're all in agreement. iPhone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How about this one? I think I think I know. So this one, car or plane? Plane. Well, you, if you're traveling a long distance. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, plane. No brainer. no brainer. There's only one of us that's afraid to afraid of airplane. <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. <laughs> car. Tommy? Car? But transitioning to plane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to learn to trust the Lord with my safety. <laughs> You've got to go to Israel, so. I do have to go to you Israel. can't really drive the <laughs> Can't drive to Israel, so. Here's the next one. Chocolate or vanilla? Mm. I think vanilla. So I'm a vanilla, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chocolate. I would go chocolate. Except for milkshakes, I would prefer a vanilla milkshake over a chocolate. Milkshake. I will say this: uh, the last ice cream cone I had, soft serve, which was like about three weeks ago, was a swirl. So mm. I don't know what that means. Okay, it means you're compromising <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Chocolate, always chocolate. Uh, you're getting a salad. Do you want ranch or honey mustard? Neither. Honey mustard. Italian. Neither. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, neither. This how is, can you this not is like how ranch? old I am. I don't like. Don't like it. Um, Thousand Island. Oh, oh, I love that's oh, yeah, that would be my no, favorite yeah. thousand. No, thousand. I'm Italian, but I'm or saying or between or vinaigrette, some sort of vinaigrette. between the two mm. options, mm. I would choose honey mustard. No, see, I have my own homemade ranch that I make. Ooh, you guys need to try it. Right. It'll, I'm gonna make it's available change. for purchase at joelmilligan.com. <laughs> I'll make a confession. I don't think I've ever had honey mustard. Really? Uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Honey mustard. I'm telling you, Daniel's coming in hot today. That's weird. Tommy, That's weird. you're telling me in 70 years. Shut up. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, 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 mustard hasn't been around his whole life, so there is man, that. You're me, <laughs> <laughs> you've never been responding. <laughs> uh, you sit down for a nice family dinner. Is it ham or turkey? Like a like a traditional, yes. not a sandwich, yes. but like a like family. a traditional family dinner. I would probably go with ham. Ham. See, I'm turkey. I do not like ham. Okay. I don't know what it is, the taste of it. I, I, I gotta go either turkey. way. Thanksgiving's got to be a turkey. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I, I like ham or turkey. I don't either have a strong yeah. one. Yeah. I just got to have a turkey at Thanksgiving. They're good with either. Yeah. Country music or rock music? Hmm. Rock music. I hate country music. Both leaning okay. toward rock music. I'm a both. Yeah. 
I lean a little more towards country. I don't know why. I just yeah, yeah. I just like good music. What whatever the genre, if it's good, I can like it. Yeah. NFL or college football? NFL. NFL. College football all day long. See, I like college football. College football all day long. Something about it. Yeah, something about it. The pageantry. The NFL all day long. All day. Yeah. It's it's so much better. So much better. There's no. There's no given. You're Alabama. Way more parity. Roll Tide. Okay. How many games actually matter? Every game. Every matters. game. No, no. You talk there's to Nick prob- Saban. There's, there's probably every game. Okay. four games. Right. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Except for the, like this last year. <laughs> How many games are you actually worried going into the weekend? Uh, you know, there, two are, or three. there are some. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole season hangs on those two or three games. It does. You're right. And then you have your guys. The, the, the one, 1% is going to be able to play at the next level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the NFL is to me the purest or the most mm-hmm. it's the best version of football. Out Every there. week any team can win. And a team that starts the season three and seven can, can make, make it playoffs. to the divisional round of the playoffs. That's right. And beyond. Mm-hmm. Go Jags. And if it wasn't Go for Jags. refing, we could have made it to the Super <laughs> Should have made it. <laughs> All right. Streaming platforms, Netflix or Disney Plus. I think I don't know. You mean, uh, what do you mean? I don't even know what the Which context. one would you prefer? <laughs> Neither? Both? I'd give up I'd Disney Plus other? before I'd give up Netflix. I yeah, think. I think so, too. The variety. Yeah. I don't have little young kids at, in the house watching that anymore. So. See, I prefer Disney Plus. Yeah. but you know, I guess if you're like a Star about, Wars fan real big uh-huh. time or something, that'd be hard to let go. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars MCU is the big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's yeah. the hard yeah. thing. Tell me you're thinking about that one. I am thinking about that one. because I'm, Yeah, probably Disney Plus. Okay. But... Man, we do watch a few Netflix specials. So I'm, I'm okay. torn, just yeah. torn. Last one. I think I know the answer. <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? <clears throat> Wrong generation to ask uh, this question. Yeah, you want to you start with a 70-year-old? <laughs> 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 Why don't you go first? You remember. I, I would He's say trying to make way. an argument for Wilt Chamberlain. Or Bill Russell. <laughs> Bill Russell, yeah. <laughs> George <laughs> Mikan. <laughs> George Mikan. The was, logo. <laughs> Jerry West. Jerry West. <laughs> um, I think if you're um, – a real basketball fan? It's Jordan. Oh, I love the way you oh, That's wow. a great qualification. I would just say Jordan. Not, I'm not going to get into it. I, I, I will say Jordan as well. Let's see, cross yeah. the board. Yeah. Cross yeah. the board. We're going to do a call in to Cliff Willis right now and get his perspective. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> we needed a diverse uh, uh, Unbiased opinion. But yeah. Uh, actually, if we got Trey Warren in here, he'd probably be pretty strong. Actually, he'd probably say Kobe. But yeah, there are always there are always disagreements. Uh, these are some mm. fun, lighthearted disagreements. But here's the question. How should we disagree well, right, agree to disagree in this age of – outrage where if you disagree with someone you are instantly um a hater uh you terms can even go even to a a bigot terms can go to uh that you just don't care about the other person if you can't see things their way and sometimes it happens face to face but a lot of times it happens not face to face but with fingers on social media Hmm and rants that we see. So as disagreements happen in the church, outside of the church, online, here's the first question today. How does disagreement create this battle inside of us between pride and humility? What is the struggle that goes on there? And how does it create that within ourselves when we disagree with someone? Well, I think I think that's a, a a good way to start the conversation, mm-hmm. and I know we'll get practical with it. I think it creates a tension inside of us uh, because on the pride side, I think we instinctively come into any conversation, and it could be as uh, kind of surface or you know kind of simple as like the, the all the mm-hmm. debate right. we just <laughs> did, or it could be on far more you know consequential uh, issues, but. You know, the pride part of us is always going to have us entering the conversation is as uh, from the posture of I'm right, no matter what, and everyone else is wrong. And uh, and that could be true, but it's going to it's going to have us coming into the conversation postured uh, a, a certain way. I, I think the humility side of things uh, and what would begin to change the dynamic of disagreement would be um that we're we come into a conversation not ready to defend our position but ready to listen uh ready to dialogue ready to have conversation 
Uh, but I do think that tension point is actually where the battle begins most of the time. It's not between two people or it's not even around a group of people. I think a lot of times the battle begins inside of us and how we're going to step into the conversation with pride or, or with humility. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Yeah, it's, I think society's changed in that area a little bit. Everybody likes to be right. I mean, nobody wants to be wrong. But I think with the advent of social media and all joking aside, living 55 years, not 70, but living, living 55 <laughs> years, um, we didn't have the immediate access to disagree with someone. And even back then, I can remember, and this will date me a little bit, Daniel's close enough to remember it. News was just news. It was presentation of facts. It was, it was hey, here's what happened today. And today in the news, ba da ba da ba da ba da ba There really wasn't a lot to either disagree with. It was just factual presentation. And so then newscasters, one of them particularly, was called the most trusted man in America mm -hmm. because he was unloading information to you. And then you saw this gradual, everything had to have a counterpoint, a balance, an argument. And now everything is argued mm -hmm. to the point who's right or who's wrong, yeah. down to the fact we can't even agree LeBron and Michael. Well, we joke around with it. There are people that get red face mad about it. Mm -hmm. And in the scope of things, I hope I don't have enough pride. It doesn't really matter who's better. Michael or LeBron, it's such a non-consequential matter. But the society has become so quick to judge everything, so quick to argue everything. So the pride of society has escalated so rapidly. And humility to go, hey, I disagree, but you may be right. Mm. Um, I think Voltaire said, I disagree with everything you say, but I would die for your right to say it. I think we've lost that type of humility uh, inside of society. Mm. Yeah, I just, I mean, to me, my first thought when this was Philippians 2, mm -hmm. the church at Philippi, deep division, deep relational problems going on. So Paul starts in chapter 2, he says, listen, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from his love, any common sharing of the Spirit, if any tenderness or compassion, then complete my joy, be like-minded, same love, one spirit, one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, value others above yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that humility allows me to go into this disagreement, assuming that I can, I don't know the whole thing. I don't have a hundred percent understanding of the topic. Mm -hmm. What can I learn from you? And am I willing to be persuaded or have I drawn a line? And if I've drawn a line and you've drawn a line, you know, we probably don't need to fight over it because yeah. It's a, we're at a standstill, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a non, it's not really, nobody's trying to persuade. You're just trying to prove yourself, prove your point. And it is mm -hmm. only driven by ego, not by concern for you, because I know you're not gonna, I yeah. want to destroy you. You know, I yeah. want to, yeah. you see that. And I, like, I've seen that I'm, I'm going to destroy this person in this debate. You yeah. Know? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Well, is that the goal to right. destroy right. them? But or? it has become, yeah, yeah. It, has. it has become the goal to win the debate. I talked through that passage with our young couples, they come over to our house on Sunday nights and we just talked through it. One of the uh, more colloquial um, translations of that says, you're going to have disagreements. You value the other person more than you would value yourself. And then you wear your love as a garment. And I love the way it says that. It goes, above all, wear love as a garment in yeah. your life. That mm -hmm. would change the humility and pride argument rapidly. Because I know like in our marriage early on, Melissa, one time she told me, she goes, you can win any debate sure. with me because you're a better arguer than I am, but you're not always right. <laughs> I, that tastes I would down. like to <laughs> beg to differ. No. That tastes going down. Yeah, that, you argued with that. Yeah, I was like, I'd like to debate that. No. Um, but that, that's true. And what I have to, in order to have good relationship, you know, you don't avoid conflict mm -hmm. because then you can get, that drives isolation yeah, yeah. and bitterness. Um, but you don't, escalate the conflict you you work through you discuss you gain understanding so i think it's mm -hmm. important we have to swallow pride um, and embrace humility and i think it's so important that, um, that whole posture i i do agree it's like if if we could get this right a lot of the the, the tension the fallout the 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 anger whatever you know kind of goes away you know you you walk into a disagreement about anything you know and it's like humility says we disagree and that's okay you know, pride says we disagree and it's not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, hu hu humility, you know, says, let me listen to what you have to say. Uh, you know, pride leads with, let me tell you what, you know, I think. Uh, and, and you, you could keep making analogy after analogy 
and 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 the 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 distinction between those two is so is so strong and the reality is is one of those pride fuels the you know the I like the way you described it you know the outrage mm-hmm. the you know the division and and humility oftentimes will will be the thing it doesn't mean you agree it doesn't mean everything gets resolved mm-hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't have to fuel the flames of of anger and division and yeah. and all that so how then did you fight against that kind of win at all cost mentality? Is it maybe in your in your marriage? I don't or, know that I have. Uh, <laughs> in, I'm not sure Melissa would say that I've actually grown in that area a whole lot. No, I think you just. At what point did you think he thought he had won that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, she was wrong. When I that, and I've proven that too. No. Uh, I think we have to. At some point, the relationship is more important than whatever it is we're arguing mm-hmm. about. And and there are things that we may see differently. But I've also learned that I I am a quick to make a to come to a conclusion. Um, and part of our like as we've grown in our relationship, she we would come to this point, and I would want quick resolution of of disagreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was like, I don't know how I feel about this. You've got to give me space to process what I think and what I feel. Um, and so where I was pretty quick, and then I end up having to walk it back later as I've gotten greater clarity, she is not as quick, which has its frustration points with people in, in relationships. But probably about the same time, we're going to get to the same conclusion where truth is because we're both pursuing truth. And like Paul said, there's unity in the spirit, and there's, we're, we're trying to walk together. And what I've had to, I've, it's really, I've had to learn of myself that my initial response can't always be trusted. And so mm-hmm. I can be quick to type up an email and I've learned I send it to Melissa or my mom is one of our <laughs> church secretaries. I'll send it to them. Can I send this email? <laughs> and, uh, they're like, no. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, yeah, you're, you're justified in that. And like, but sometimes I've learned that I can't trust my initial response. Yeah. Um, and especially as, is I can, I'm very passionate, I'm a passionate advocate. Um, and so if I feel an injustice is being done towards somebody, I'm going to come off hot. Like as, as a dad watching your sons play basketball, Tommy and I have, Oof. our wives would not sit would with us during basketball games because basketball if, if an injustice is being done, that kid can't <laughs> advocate for himself. So I'm going to, my job is to advocate for him and let the ref yes. know how horrible of a call that was because I'm passionate about it. And then there's times where I was like, yeah, that's probably, if, that's probably a good call. <laughs> but as part of it's, but that's how I'm wired. And I've, as I've grown in my understanding of myself, I have to recognize that and I have to make sure I don't come in guns a blazing because that's rarely a good thing. Yeah. And so I, I can go to my, my wife, my mom, I come to Tommy's office and I'm like, bruh, 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 bruh. all right, I got it out. I could go have the meeting fine. now and I'll yeah. be good. We can actually yeah. engage this. I've gotten, but I've, I've had to learn that about myself. Yeah. I think we have to know how we are yeah. wired. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I have a, I'm explosive and then it's done. Other people's are that long fuse that man, if it gets boiling, it could take a long time mm-hmm. to de- yeah. just defuse that. One of Daniel's best in game wins. We had a ref and Daniel, we were sitting together, I think at Hilliard or somewhere. Baldwin. Baldwin. He remembers. He remembers. I, I remember. think he yelled at the guy, and the guy turned around and said, do you want to ref this game? He and offered me the whistle. Know, offered him the whistle. <laughs> said, do you want to ref this? And Daniel said, I paid $5 to watch you try. <laughs> like, <laughs> and the whole gym was dead quiet, and everybody's looking at me in this referee, and I went, I, I think I just crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> See, in our in our relationship, it's the it's the other way around. When Brayden's playing basketball, I'm the one that's leaning over to Jen, oh, and I'm saying, man. hey, Jen, you can't say that. I've seen that you firsthand. That. <laughs> I sat by you in games this Listen, year. <laughs> and I love Jen. I heard it firsthand. <laughs> From the other side From of the, the gym. Side, I to come to one of these games yeah, now. He's yelling. Woo. That is yeah. great. And then I, I saw Jen. I went, yeah. Hallelujah. Melissa <laughs> looked at me one time after a game. She goes, hey, why don't you go invite that, invite that referee to church? <laughs> Tell him what you do for a living and invite him to church. I'm like, 
Daniel, yeah, Daniel responded. He said, I'm pretty sure it's clear where he's going. I went, Daniel, you can't say that. But. I feel like that ref actually came to a football game this year to run a clock did. and, and he, like walked yeah. right behind you. He <laughs> like, did. And I went, I said, Tommy, that's the guy I yelled at that we got that fight with. This ought to go well. Yeah. Hey, he was still, he was a horrible clock operator. Didn't get anything right then. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you're right, Daniel, you just can't let it go. Uh, so, so one of the things what Daniel says is true. We talked about this in our young couples um, encounter. When you learn to value the differences in the other person and realize the other person, I think that's why the Bible says that you treat them and you value them as you esteem them higher than mm-hmm. you. Yeah. One of the best things for me going to Jacksonville University, honestly, honestly, was to be around a lot of people that was way smarter than I was. Mm-hmm. And to realize these people are well-intentioned. They are kind-hearted people. They are, and they're actually way smarter than me in some areas. So sometimes we're so apt due to pride to say, I've got to be right here. We lose the ability to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We lose the ability to grow in our relationship. So coming into my relationship with Rhoda, she is, things are black and white. Nothing exists in areas of gray. It just doesn't happen. Um, she's extreme, extremely, like when I'd say street smart, she's just life smart. She's not going to read books. She's not going to grow in, she's not going to read philosophy, but she's really just life smart. Well, I can out, I don't say this wrong. This is a bad way to say it. Not outsmart her, but I can almost out argue her, out angle her. And so it really hurt our relationship. You're a better manipulator. Is that what you're I was going to say? That, but yeah, that's probably accurate. That is probably accurate. I can emotionally and word right. beat no. somebody into a corner. So I realized it's not growing our relationship. And so then the Bible says it this way: only by pride comes contention. So if there is contention yeah. in your relationship, you know, pride. Pride yeah. is there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. And the sooner you dig down to that area of pride and say, "Listen." For my relationship to be the best it's going to be, I've got to empty myself of all pride and realize I can learn from any person in my life. Mm -hmm. I have two ears, one mouth. Why don't I listen twice as much as I talk and just back away? Mm -hmm. So that that is a real relationship advice level for me. So more on the practical side, you know, when the Bible says be quick to listen, Mm -hmm. slow to speak, Mm -hmm. and slow to get angry, why is that important in any disagreement? And how does that flesh out maybe in your lives? Well, I mean, if you, if you reverse, you know, the order there, you know, and you uh, are quick to anger, quick mm-hmm. to speak, and then slow to listen, I mean, inevitably you're working not and that, and that goes toward yeah. the, toward the, if you, if you can get on the other side of the argument and go, what, what do I want or what do I value the most? In, in theory, we value the relationship. Daniel said that already. We should. Mm-hmm. We, we, we should value uh, restoration or resolution or, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like. And so the path toward that, the biblical, you know, path toward that is listening, mm-hmm. then, you know, sharing. And then if we're, we're, we're talking about, and this is, I think, a big change in perspective, you know, hey, there's a, there's a righteous indignation you, you, you find in, in, in Scripture that, okay, maybe at some point, you know, hey, this is actually a, an issue or a topic or whatever that that needs a, a strong, you know, forceful response. I think the problem is, is we view a lot of our conversations at all levels. We view it like, hey, 98 percent of what we're talking about is us standing for truth. And the other two percent is just kind of stuff we can disagree over when the reality is most of life is 98 percent of stuff we can probably be OK disagreeing over. And then there's this you know small but real part that, right. that we, we've got to stand boldly. But if you get that biblical order wrong, you, you begin to walk away from the path toward relationship, reconciliation, (laughs) restoration. And so, I mean, it's, it's so critical because it it takes you somewhere beyond the heat of the moment. Yeah. Gary Chapman has a great book called the other side of love. Um, and it's how to have, how to leverage your anger, your anger in a biblical and godly way. We see God get angry. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, it's a study in the, on Jonah and how God, mm-hmm. it contrasts how God dealt with the Ninevites and Jonah's feelings of anger toward God and the Ninevites. Right. Mm-hmm. Jonah got mad and wanted them punished for what they had done mm-hmm. and wasn't going to let go of his anger until he saw them destroyed. God got angry, showed his anger, and once repentance was, he re- he repented. He, he released his anger. Mm-hmm. And he does that throughout the Old Testament with the Israelites. My anger is to scare you a little bit 
so that you repent and get back on the straight and narrow. That's what we see God's anger do over and over again um, throughout the Old Testament. His whole point is too often we don't see anger. Because anger is a is motivator. When I get angry, I, I move from passive to sometimes too aggressive. But I actually get up and do something about because yeah. it's made me angry. I'm gonna I got to deal with this. Well, if we see it as this emotion that God's given us that can motivate us toward action, and we recognize it for what it is. Then once we are in action, we pull back and we let justice, truth, righteousness Mm -hmm. be the driver, not our anger. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see. God, he's driven by that, and his anger is that emotion that drives to anger or to action. It's a great book. I think if you struggle with anger or you are somebody who is, you just suppress all your Mm -hmm. anger. Um, You know, anger is the opposite of love or isn't is not the opposite of love. It's a, it's it's beside it. It's another side of love. Mm-hmm. I don't get angry about things I don't care about. The opposite yeah. of love is apathy. Right. Yeah. 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 So anger, I only get passionately angry about something that really matters to me. And um, or if I'm deeply wounded by somebody that I really care about. Mm-hmm. And so great book I'd recommend. You know, he's the author of Love Languages. Yeah. Um, but he wrote that it's a small, easy read, The Other Side of Love. Um, if you're one who feels like you got, you can't, it's wrong to get angry. You can't, you don't know how to get angry and not sin. You know, it says mm-hmm. be angry and sin not. It doesn't say don't be angry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I do that in a way that honors God? It's a great, great little resource mm-hmm. that I recommend. Good. So speaking of anger, let's jump into the social media world. Mm. And I'm sure you have scrolled past posts that maybe brought about some anger inside or made you think I've got to comment on this <clears throat> right. or I've got to yeah. share my opinion. I've got to let them know what I think of their post. How do we manage social media disagreements? <laughs> I, I won't give you an answer to that question yet. But I'm sure we'll talk about it. I will say okay. two things social media has done in this arena for us detrimentally. One is I don't think we disagree we have differences of opinions or beliefs or ideas more today than we used to. Mm-hmm. But social media is now informing me that I disagree with more people than I realize I do. <laughs> in other yeah. words, you know, go back like when we all of us grew up, right. you know, in our formative years before social media. You know, the blessing was we may have disagreed with a lot of people. We just had no idea about it because we weren't all sharing our you know, innermost thoughts, you know, with the world. Today, now I'm aware, oh, wow, I see this differently than this person and this person and about this issue and this issue. And so all of a sudden, the conflict or the disagreement is much more in my face. Yeah. And then two, and Tommy, I think kind of alluded to this earlier, or Daniel, um, it, it, has, it has pulled a filter away from yeah. us. And so before, we might be in our <laughs> living room listening to the newscaster yeah. and to no one, we're shouting, yeah. they're stupid, that idea is stupid, I don't like them, but there's nobody there. And then we cool down and then we go about life right. and never actually say what, what we're thinking. Social media has eliminated the filter, the space, the time, and the distance between our, our relationships that is really healthy. And so now, unfortunately, we see something that we don't like and we go ahead and say, you're stupid, your idea is stupid, you know, and I don't, I don't like you and your people. And, you know, and, and, and so it's those two things to me are, have really fed into unhealthy realities and the, the pride we were talking about. I know I disagree with a lot more people than I used to. And the filter on how I manage my response has been drastically eliminated. I think that's really wise what he just said. And I think I'll add one maybe yeah. layer to it. Yeah. It just didn't remove the filter. It also added the ability of immediacy. Yes. You yeah. can respond immediately. So when something happens on the news, you go on social media and it's like how people and celebrities are responding to something that happened six minutes ago. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm not that old yet, but so if you got a letter from your girlfriend in high school, you had a full class period to sit there and think about it. Like, I don't want to process this. Or if you got a letter in the mail from the church that you had a 24 hour period to sit there and go over it. Now it is, it's an immediate response. And so even at my age, I'll read, like I read some from certain people over the last week that as I read it, I went, what an idiot. And it just made me angry. And so the first thing you can see me doing is like, 
I'm starting to type a response. And then Red will go, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to blast this guy. This is, this is, she goes, back away. And so I think Andrew, you said Andrew said something. Yeah, Andrew, we, uh, uh, Andrew Carr, his son, he said, uh, he said, if you have to think about what you're about to type, just don't pi- just don't post it. You and know? that's probably <laughs> is probably a really really good advice. Like if you're sitting there and if somebody's got to read it like, in advance, just don't just, just don't, don't yes. post it. Yeah. Yes. And so I can't tell you like the immediacy part. There were times growing up in a different social, no social media, that by the time you actually engaged or saw the person that had written that or said that, your emotions had calmed down. The immediacy of the event had gone by. You were more logically thinking out loud. I think a lot of times I love the idea that filter has been removed and now we have immediate access. And how many of how many people listen to the podcast? You've sent something and the yeah. minute you hit send, you went, oh, man, it's probably, yeah, yeah. probably just, not the right thing just, to yeah, do. I, I should have just pulled back on that. So I do think that the social media has added that element of filter's gone now. The immediacy is gone. And Daniel's right. We used to sit there and watch news. And my dad would sit in the corner and go, that's stupid. Yeah, right. Yeah. He told three people in the room. Yeah. He didn't tell 1400 followers yeah, right. on Facebook, how he felt. Yeah. So I do think that's no, changed. Not to get like overly philosophical about it, yeah. but I think this is true. COVID, I feel like, should have helped us with this mm-hmm. part of it in that we, what has also happened with technology, so it's not just social media, it could be email, but with technology, is it has taken our relationships and, and then our disagreements and it has disembodied them. And so you know, our, you know, I think we said that we talked to, I think I said this on Sunday, our faith, you know, we've been called not just to be as an individual, but into community and relationship. God's designed us to literally have an embodied experience physically, emotionally, relationally. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what it has done is it's taken conversation of all kinds, but especially hard conversation. And then it's eliminated the power of embodiment and Mm -hmm. the health of embodiment. And then it's allowed me to turn Tommy, who I disagree with over his ideas about whatever, Mm -hmm. into this kind of nameless, faceless kind of person that I might truly not even see. You know, I might not run into him or ever talk to him. And so then I can just put him on blast because because the the conversation, the relationship has been has been disembodied. And I promise you the same conversation happening in the flesh I mean, nine times out of 10, it goes very differently. Yeah, and sure. I really think the conversation's yeah. just disembodied. That's very true. But on social media, it's compounded. So, so the problem is actually compounded. It's not just that me and Daniel disagree. Mm-hmm. Now all my friends disagree yeah, with Daniel, yeah, and yeah. all Daniel's friends disagree yeah. with me. So now we're compounding the problem in society. Mm-hmm. And if you're not careful, even inside of a church, if one church member decides to passive-aggressive disagree with something Daniel said or Jason or Mark saying or Andrew did, once he posted, then all of a sudden people started lining along this area yeah. and you're actually compounding the problem. We're not solving any problems. Yeah. We're not solving anything. Yeah. All we're doing is adding to the division. I think you know, sitting around the dinner table and we have a discussion around politics or whatever, yeah. how I respond, knowing that I got to sit around the dinner table with this person a lot over my life. Mm-hmm. It, how big of a deal is this? I got to sit in church with this person. Mm-hmm. How big of a deal is this worth division in the body mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and social media? Mm. Lots of time. We, we don't think that way. We're just, Oh, it's social media. We can be whatever. And then we think when we see them in person, like, why are you acting like we're all good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw what you posted, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, how you responded. <laughs> and I think that's the difficulty mm-hmm. um, with, with all of that. The, the other thing sense. is also kind of underneath that is usually, and again, I know there's some exceptions to this, what everybody is disagreeing on is mostly who Does, cares, know, it you know, matter. it's like if yeah. you if you if you kind of chalk it up, it's like most of the stuff. It's not, you know, the deity of Jesus. And so, you know, we're over here just talking about whatever, you know, and, and for deeper discussion on that, please refer back to yeah, a previous, okay, podcast. A previous podcast. But, yeah. but you're, but <laughs> you know, you're most, right. most of you're what we're exactly talking right. about, you know, that podcast <laughs> yeah. we did, yeah. the triage one, there's, you know, first order, second order, third order, right. fourth order, like. I'm convinced 95% of our disagreements aren't even on the order spectrum. No. They're like somewhere off on the side. Right. And yet we're all over here, you know, been out of shape because of all the things we just yeah. talked about. We're disembodied. There's no filter. There's no space. There, you know, all those things are true. And uh, it, it's a tool. Yeah. Technology's helpful. You know, I'm not over here wishing all of it would go away. Yeah. But there are some real downsides that believers especially should 
should put strong kind of guards against. And I think you should do that. Here's a great, we just did this Sunday night. The same idea we just voiced, and I think that was a great way Daniel put it, is the same way you should be in the house, in the, in the home right. with your family. So it took me probably a year to realize in marriage, it didn't matter which way the toilet roll came off. The <laughs> it if it was over uh, or under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In but, but my exactly. house, it, it matters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not right. first order yeah. doctrine, <laughs> right? I can still be married. Like one of the young married couples said, we just don't put it on the roll and it solves the problem. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah. But so, so here's so what like Somebody needs to get their house in order. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn in marriage quickly what needs to be escalated to a conversation. And what is just part of marrying somebody that's probably different? That's different? Things that attracted you before attack you after. And so if you keep that in mind, hey, somebody doesn't have to win or lose. We just have to merge lives together. Same mm-hmm. thing in the body of Christ. So if mm-hmm. we ran, just think if you did that in your marriage, every time you had a disagreement with Christy, yeah. you ran to Facebook. <laughs> and Or you went to your family mm-hmm. and said, hey, you know what your mama just did? Mm-hmm. You imagine the discord that would sow. Yep. But for some reason... Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it's become this public discourse of disagreements. It's no longer a conveyance of ideas. It's a pool of disagreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has sure. tribalism made disagreements in relationships more difficult? Social media wise or in person, has it made it more difficult of what tribe are you in? Mm-hmm. Left, ring, left wing, right wing, what do you believe? Has that made it more difficult to have disagreements and honest discussions. We, we were talking about sports earlier, and I think, and you know, somebody's a lot smarter than me could get into the psychology of all of this. Somehow or another, the the dynamics of sports, and I'm not, I'm not talking about sport specifically, yeah. but the dynamics of sports have somehow be, become ingrained almost into every facet of, of human experience in, in, two way, in two key ways. There are now teams, and you, you need to pick a team, Right. And then two, there's winners and losers. And this is a game and we got to win, you know, and I, I'm not maybe, you know, <laughs> uh, like we're none of us have the hindsight of decades, hundreds of years, but maybe it's always been this way and we're just feeling it fresh. It, it seems, though, that these dynamics all of a sudden. So to tribalism is really, you know, has turned serious things, relationships, politics, religion, like real serious, good parts of normal human society, it's turned it into a game mm. where there are teams yeah, and it's a game yeah. to be won or lost, you know, and you want, you want the other team to, to really lose and you want your team to really win. Tommy said it earlier, you know, you're, you're looking for those opportunities and, yeah. and same thing. And how does it look? You get into a casual conversation about whatever oh. and your friends come over to the, your team defends your point and your team oh. defends your point. And the conclusion is we need somebody to lose and we need somebody to win. And that's not healthy. Mm. And, and you see that we could just go down, you know, politics, big time, oh. religion, though, big same time. thing, you know, yeah. church world, big mm-hmm. time, you know, relationships, everything, you yeah. know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, you, not it's that idea of you're either for me or against me. Yes. And the problem with that, you think Jesus, whenever his disciples, Hey, John's disciples are doing this and like, he's casting out demons in your name. And like, Okay. <laughs> yeah, glad the demons are being cast yeah. out. Yeah, and then Paul, you know, some preach, preach uh, Christ of contention. Some are see my chains as evidence that I wasn't the man right, that right. I claimed to be. And he goes, I'm just glad Christ is being preached. Yeah, yeah. And you, we tend to that totalitarianism and that tribalism. It's either about insecurity or it's about power. Power, yeah. And yeah. some people really want to develop power as a leader and authority and be get this platform. Well, the easiest way to build a platform is by what you're against, mm-hmm. not what you're for. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. to have this very narrow tent and we want to die on that hill as a martyr. Well, all these people are attacking me. Well, that's because you're being a jerk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that I think that's where tribalism, it doesn't have a place. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a, the idea. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollo, so I'm of Christ. That is, that gets Every time that raises up in the early church, it gets called out by yes, Scripture. Yes. Right. And I think that tribalism, and it, it just is so frustrating. And usually it's but when you actually meet the people that are the power brokers in it, you're just like, I wouldn't follow these guys anyway. They're, they're, yeah. They have so many issues, right. and, mm-hmm. and by the, they don't finish well because by the end of their life, the cracks show, and, and it's just it's hard. I mean, we, we grew up in that yeah. cult of personality, mm-hmm. and... 
I just, I don't have any stomach for it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing will turn me off faster than that ultimate tribalism. And it's sad how early it now starts. You see on you know, social media, you can go to YouTube and watch parents getting in fights at four year old baseball games. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is my kid's team. And I'm like, so then they start separating based on that. And the pressure becomes that if you ever have an idea outside of your tribe, you better be careful if you voice it. Right. Yeah. You'll be thrown yeah. out and murdered by your own tribe. Yeah. And so I think there are a lot of people within these tribes that probably hold different opinions than their tribe, but they're afraid to move outside of it. I think mm -hmm. there are pastors trapped inside of denominations. Yeah. I think there are pastors trapped inside of belief systems that really lend to no transparency, no credibility, no integrity. And so tribalism is an, for me is a massive issue. It I becomes think an echo chamber. It does. Right. That, and then that's where I think the positive of social media is it exposed us to things that, oh, I've always wondered, I've always felt this and I didn't mm -hmm. know anybody agreed with me because I was just told to suppress it. So that is a positive yeah, yeah. to education mm -hmm. and broader exposure. It's like what you said, you experienced at JU. It's yeah. what I experienced going away to college. Mm -hmm. You begin to, oh, there are people smarter than me. I went to a Christian university. There are people more spiritual than I am that according to my narrow view that I was taught probably aren't orthodox but now I'm finding maybe what else was I misinformed mm. about yeah. and there is a, a danger to that to the power brokers yeah and that's where mm. I think um, and there's you know the filter the danger of of trying to filter out truth and yeah. there is that but I think that echo chamber um becomes that tribe. If yeah, you think would, differently, if you yeah. step out of line, you better watch yeah. out. And I think it, depending on where you're at in your own life and whoever's watching this or listening, there are things that we would never negotiate. We talked about that as first yeah. order doctrine. Yeah, right. So I'm not right. talking about this. Right. But you ought to look at the people you're around, the church you're in, the fellowship you're engaged with. The more narrow your tribe is, we really preach that as, man, we are so narrow that nobody agrees with us. And this is elitism. Yeah. The wider you get, the more thought life you're having. Like, I love that word Daniel used, this echo chamber. If you're in a place that you hundred people are the only one agree, you're probably just a few steps from being in a cult. Yeah, mm. right. Or, and in you made you be right in the middle in of a cult. Yeah. Yeah. I read a book about two attorneys. It was called, I'm Fine with God. It's Christians I can't stand. And the whole point of it was they'd gotten so narrow that anywhere they went, they said, well, we disagree with this. And it wasn't like, well, let's talk it through. Like you're excluded till the two attorneys basically said, we've just been excluded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think looking at that, it's been a wonderful thing for me to even be on the staff, being around, you know, Daniel and Daniel and Tom and you and all the guys, just to listen to how we all have different takes on different subjects. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you start getting wider and you start getting deeper, not about ultimate cardinal issue type of things, but about life in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and so being around like Daniel, we've had discussions about authors that maybe we haven't read, but he'll go, Hey, here's where really value is. And I start to grow through that mm -hmm. process. So tribalism, if you're not careful, becomes denominational. And then it becomes, it's just us to where even independent Baptists don't get along with Southern Baptists right. and Southern Baptists above the Mason Dixon line. Don't. And then all of a sudden it gets to this point where it's just us. I mean, I, I love the mm -hmm. joke that was told somebody died and went to heaven and St. Peter's leading him yeah. through, right? And he goes through, he gets to the first room and the guy goes, well, what's in there? And he opens it up and it's just a party. Everybody's having a great time. And they're like, ah, he goes, who are those? He goes, it's the charismatics right there. <laughs> they're really happy to be here. <laughs> they get to the next room and he goes, hey, open, open the door. And there's some more dignified people uh -huh. and they're, they're having discourses yeah. around coffee tables. And he goes, well, who is that? He goes, those are the reform guys. He goes, they're just talking about the journey that led them here. And St. Peter goes, hey, be really quiet while we pass the next door. He goes, well, he goes, it's the Baptist. They think they're the only ones here. <laughs> if you're not careful, that's where it'll lead you. And in families, to so think also in families, that idea of, well, I'm on so-and-so's side. And, mm -hmm. you know, so really mm -hmm. that yeah. picking tribes rather than trying to be unified. Yeah. Well, you know what happens in, in tribalism, too? You, you begin to embrace... Uh, over time, the deeper you get into it, you begin to embrace values that are like major, you know, like unhealthy or, or anti-biblical. And it's like because you get consumed with that mindset that we have to win, this is a zero-sum game, whatever it is, you know, you see this a lot in politics, you see this a lot even in religious dialogue, you know, it's like all of a sudden we start valuing things. You know, you hear people talk about it around political candidates or, or, or leaders of tribes, you know, and it's like, well, I really like them because they're going to they're going to say what everybody else is thinking. It's like, well, that's not 
nine times out of ten ever really a great idea. You know, no, they're, well, they're going to just go, look through they're, history. They're going to yeah, go after and take that. down the you know the whatever. And it's like, well, I don't think you know. And we're saying it like, oh yeah, that's, that's what we thing, want. Man. And it's like, it's just well, not a good idea. That's really not good. You know, that's not right. That's not healthy. And that's the de- that's the the danger of getting deep into into um, you know tribalism. Yeah. You, you you succumb to all of these unbiblical ideas of power and winning and pride and yeah, mm. not good. So has the idea of if you disagree with me, you must hate me. Oh. Has that yeah. has that something that's been that's always been around, or is that something that's just been more current in culture? I think it's been around a long yeah, time. I would yeah. say historically. I think many, many, can... many believers that were burned at the stake yeah. would say that it's been around yeah. Yeah. as long as human and humanity yeah. has been on. I do think in this age of, you know, cancel culture, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And the it has become much more this idea. Tolerance is no longer what you quoted from mm-hmm. Voltaire. I'm going to fight for your right to say it, although I disagree with everything. Yeah. No, tolerance now means, well, you have to accept my ideas equally as valid as yours. Mm -hmm. And that -hmm. that becomes the tension, Mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure is not new. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. Right. But it has, it's probably more recent in a postmodern era where truth is not absolute than it was during the modern era, Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, nine out of 10 experts agree. Well, that's because they just are, they're the power brokers. And the, Mm -hmm. the one expert that disagrees, you know, is, is just being silenced. That you know, that that postmodern look mm-hmm. at truth and value um, has shaped, I think, that what we feel today of if you disagree with me, it's it's you hate me type mm-hmm. of thing. So as we finish up this discussion, I think it's good to to finish with what are some biblical principles to resolve the conflict to get to a point to where I can agree to disagree, or maybe I overstep my bounds in this argument. What are some principles that all of us can use, listeners can use to resolve conflict, uh, whether it's on social media, whether it's in person, what are some things that you can share? I think the passage Daniel referenced earlier, I, I've memorized it in the older version of it, we let nothing be done through strife, like striving or vainglory. Now there's an old English word that means contention for superiority. It means I have to be superior to you inside of this, but in a lowliness of mind, let me value or esteem you better than me. Hmm. I think you want to talk about ultimate conflict resolution. If I enter any, any disagreement with, I value you more than I value myself. I'm not going to bring pride. I'm going to remove strife. Hmm. I don't have to win this. I value you most likely more than the issue we're dealing with. And at the end of the day, if I have to lay down my preference to, to win you, I will do that. Hmm. If marriages did that, marriages would change. If hmm. churches live that way, yeah churches would change. If society lived that way, it was society would change. Yeah. I think if you could grab some of the principles that are just so heavy, especially around like New Testament Christianity, the way of Jesus around the, the, the significance and priority of relationship, and then specifically of unity inside of that, especially of course, within the church and the body of Christ. If, if we would, if, if we could value that, I think biblically where they land on a priority standpoint, it would create the necessary filter and it would create the, the guard against some of the more petty superficial stuff that we, we find ourselves in, in conflict over, you know, it, it should, in my opinion, it should take something honestly pretty serious. And I, I don't mean necessarily over just over, you know, defense of truth, but it should take something pretty serious in a relationship for me to say something that's going to put, present challenge to relationship or unity. And, you know, it's like, if I'm about to say something that is fairly superficial and doesn't really matter, and there's a chance that it's going to hurt a relationship, even a, even a distant relationship, or it's going to challenge the unity of the faith, and we're talking about something that's so inconsequential. I'm not saying it. I, I can think it all day long. I can, you know, I can really, I can share it with, with him, yeah. you know, you know, and I'll tell him what my two cents. But I mean, I'm not sharing it because I value unity and I value, you know, relationship. Um, and and I think if I think if we could grab those biblical principles, and then the other thing I would just say is, I mean, on social media is a good point. It's like, and maybe this is also getting older. 
you know, because I probably would joke about this, but it's like, I really just want to see kind of your family pic- vacation pictures. <laughs> I want to know what you had for lunch. What you have for yeah. lunch? I want to see the picture from your kids' t-ball games. I want to know what happened at church on Sunday. I funny. do not care what you think about anything about whatever. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. it's like just don't engage in controversial stuff on social media. Right. You know, and you'll be fine. You know. <laughs> I got three things. One, you don't have to f- attend every fight you're invited to. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a biblical uh, idea or not, but we get invited to a lot of fights on social media, through email, through personal conflict. I don't mm-hmm. have to go to every fight that I'm invited to. Mm-hmm. Um, two, Jesus came and he said that he came with grace and truth. The order mattered. Mm-hmm. God always shows grace and then gives truth. He delivered the people of Israel from Egypt. Then he gave the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. He he delivered us and then puts the guidelines for what it looks like to follow him. Grace before truth. And Paul said the third thing is, he said, let your speech be always with grace and seasoned with salt. And if we take salt as truth... We tend to dump a whole lot of truth, and we apologize for a little bit of grace. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we should be always with grace and seasoned with salt. Yeah, and I think if we would pick our battles wisely, you, know, you don't have to make, you don't have to go to every battle fight that you're invited to. We see grace as in truth. I need to make sure anytime I speak truth, it's preceded by grace. Speak the truth mm-hmm. in love. Mm-hmm. And then that idea be have your speech be always with grace and seasoned with salt. I think that would it would diffuse a whole lot of situations. Yeah. Um, I had a conflict resolution I was working with last week, and uh, l- went into this just listened. Then we followed up with, "Hey, we're going to take this pretty hard step because of mm-hmm. where you f- we think you are." Listening. Showing grace, really trying to understand, then speaking truth directly, but in love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The follow-up conversation the next day, it was a different person, and we worked toward resolution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had we come in and given our ultimatum first without listening and really understanding, when our ultimatum sort of shifted after we heard, but then we are able to deal with it. And I think that's what's super healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's where pick your battles, mm-hmm. grace before truth, mm-hmm. Always with grace, seasoned with salt. Yeah, I think the biblical premise for what you said in the first one, there is a biblical premise. It's, I think, when Paul said, don't give yourself the doubtful disputations. Mm-hmm. Don't dispute doubtful things. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up in an argument if you do it. Yeah. Smalley or Parrot said it this way. If you really want to do good conflict resolution, never skip the step of switching perspectives. Yeah. See if you can put yourself in another man's shoes, Jeez. another person's shoes. Happened to me at FSU's basketball camp. I was over there, and I got mad at the referee. I was fussing with him as a player. So that game ended. We were about to go to the next game. And he goes, hey, we're going to do some players. They're going to be the referees for the next game. They said, 23 from Trinity, come here. Here's the whistle. <laughs> and I ran out on the floor, and I went, everybody's moving really fast. I said, <laughs> I think I just hard. missed that call. I just yeah. did that. Yeah. So the ref I had yelled at came over. It's a little different when you're wearing the whistle, isn't it? So if you want to really help with conflict resolution, Wear the other person's whistle for a while yeah. and see if it may change your perspective. Since that time, Tommy has never. That's I was going to say, let's be really say, clear. How is that since 20 years to, later? Me and Tommy are getting ref, threatened to get kicked referee. out of gyms <laughs> for yelling at referees. I didn't say that sanctification is complete. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I was aware of the problem. That's all I'm saying. Hey, great word today. Hey, listen, if you're thinking about posting something on Facebook, maybe in the words of Daniel Riddick, just post your vacation. Just <laughs> yeah, post yeah. what you're eating today. But really appreciate it. Or a five-star it. review on uh, oh, wherever yes. you download uh, That's right. the podcast. Yes. Right? That's hey. right. Yes. Hey, follow us on YouTube or Spotify or an Apple podcast. And thank you so much for listening today. We'll catch you next time.